Hi, this is your host, Sublim Parthia, and welcome to TFR Insights, a show where we deep dive into emerging technologies. And today we have with us, once again, Robin Purohit, co-founder and CEO of Peritus. Robin, we spoke earlier for our prediction series, so our viewers already know a bit about the company, but I would like to remind them who you are. So can you please quickly tell about the company? Yeah, great to speak with you again, Swapnil. Um, Peritus AI, we're a Silicon Valley-based startup that provides a recommendation engine for tech support. Our, our whole company mission is to bring tech workers AI assistance that makes them more productive in their job. Veritas has joined NVIDIA's inception program. Tell me a bit about what is this program all about and how are you leveraging their technologies uh, for your own recommendation engine? Yeah, we're really excited to join their startup program. Uh, we're heavy users of NVIDIA technology on multiple public clouds. So we use their GPUs and enabling technology for all of our deep learning systems. And we kind of share their vision that you know, this is kind of the time for recommendation engines to cross over from the consumer segment uh, to the enterprise. And so we're working with them both on educating the market on that, as well as using their technology and all the developer training that uh, makes our people smarter. <laughs> We are quite aware of how uh, consumer space is leveraging recommendation engines, uh, whether it's Amazon or Netflix or any other uh, service out there. Uh, we see them recommending the post and all those things. But can you talk about the use of recommendation engine by enterprise customers and why do they need it? Yeah, just to, to anchor people, so because not everybody knows what a recommendation system or engine is, right? So if you think of you know Netflix recommending your next movie. Uh, the Amazon has an assistant now that you know suggests things that you might want to buy. Um, you know those are things that we encounter in our daily life in the consumer world. Now the great thing is that those kind of cloud companies have have really lowered the cost of doing recommendation and systems. The enabling compute and the machine learning technology is all readily available. Uh, for the enterprise, it's, high, it's the challenge is a little different. You don't have as much data. You have enterprise data, and so it means that you have to pick a particular use case uh, and be, be very good at understanding insights from that data in a way that makes an individual more productive in their work. And the real difference that we're going through this year is that now that labeling technology is matured enough that companies like us and many others are trying to deliver very rapid initial ROI so that people can get comfortable with kind of investing more in enabling people to be productive. So for us, we tend to focus on tech workers, but this process is being applied to manufacturing, sales, marketing, et cetera, as well. Great. Can you give some examples of how enterprise users are leveraging recommendation engines? Well, you know, maybe a, a crossover thing that a lot of people use that might be more relatable is Grammarly. You know, I'm a big Grammarly user. And Grammarly, you can use it in your daily life, but also in your work life. And they essentially provide an you know, AI system that helps you write better and more coherently uh, and even more sensitively <laughs> if you enable that feature, right? So to me, they're a great example of um, an AI capability that's making people more effective and more productive versus you know, these kind of pernicious things that are trying to game you and bait you into buying something, <laughs> even though you may not want to buy it. <laughs> Um, so for, for us, we try to do that for technical problems, right? There's this, you know, tens of millions of, of technical workers around the world that are all trying to master the latest technology and do their job better. Um, and so what we're trying to do is provide them insights on how they can either support a customer or develop a new product faster uh, by giving recommendations in the moment that they're doing their work. Now let's talk about uh, your recommendation and what kind of content are you showing to your customers? Yeah, so our, our recommendation engine is a cloud platform, and we ingest data on a variety of IT topics. And so that includes public conversations that are happening on communities, whether it's a vendor community or a, you know on these the vast public public community on GitHub or Stack Overflow. Um, then we also find all the content related to those topics and ingest that into our system. And uh, use machine learning to match questions people are asking to the most likely answers that are buried in those historical conversations or content that's published in various forms. 
Um, now, what's important, as I said before, is most people want, technical people want help from somebody else that knows what they're doing, not a bot. Right? So our focus is helping the, the people who are trying to be helpful be more effective, not replace them with the bot. So that's a lot of content, but can you talk about where are you ingesting the content from so that you can recommend it to your users or customers? That's a great question. Yeah, so look, we, as we talked before, I think the way, this new wave of enterprise AI is about very fast ROI, right? Because like we've seen in the past, there's a lot of technology ways where people throw a lot of money and, and it's two or three years before they see value. <laughs> I don't think that's the pathway to successful enterprise AI. So we've deliberately picked certain hot areas like cloud native technologies um, or big vendors like Cisco or Mongo. And we've actually pre-trained our models by finding all the public conversations and content and you know, expert upvotes and you know, all those sort of things. We built that into our system. So the moment somebody downloads our assistant, um, they see some immediate value that's better than Google search and better than what they could do using their own hunt and peck to find an answer. <laughs> and of course, as they use it, as more people use it, the recommendations get better. And then if a, a, one of our customers wants to provide us data that's not in the public domain, we'll integrate that into the system. And then now uh, we have you know, more content to provide our recommendations based on now, the interesting thing is that the space that we are working in is quite dynamic. New technologies, new paradigms, they keep coming up at a very fast rate. Uh, and cloud native is a very crowded and busy space. So how do you keep up with the latest content that is available out there about all these cloud native or emerging technologies? Uh, do you have your own CI CD pipeline where you ingest the data or content and then deliver it to your customers? We've done all of the CI CD DevOps <laughs> that internally to run this at scale. So we're, we're basically ingesting data continuously at scale and putting it into our cloud recommendation engine. And um, I think you're absolutely right. There's a huge pain point on this cloud data transition. You know, I think now the vast majority of companies are going cloud native, but there's a huge skills gap on what it takes to be successful, especially given the pace of change. I mean, I don't know, do you even know how many different Kubernetes distributions are in the market today? And then you know that they work very differently. We're in a multi-cloud reality, right? So they all work slightly differently depending on which you know, private or public cloud platform you're running it on. So it's a real complex task. I've seen my own super smart people struggle with the daily execution there. So, you know, that's a, a, a amazing initial pain point for us to focus on. And a lot of the discussion happens in public. So we can do significant pre-training of our models. I mean, the, the, the biggest pain point in today's world is having access to such resources, such content. We don't value it or we don't see the impact of it or directly on developers or DevOps or DevSecOps uh, pipelines and workflow. But can you talk about what is the direct impact of uh, recommendation engines on the pipelines and workflow that you see on DevOps engineers or developers? Yeah, so, so I think the one of the first things we're trying to do is to make sure that uh, people look good. <laughs> Meaning if they can make people more successful, then as an engineer, your reputation gets better you're more employable either by your current or a future employer. So particularly on these community forums, um, people earn reputation points if they can answer more questions better, especially the more complex ones, because they're outvoted by the community. So that's our first focus is how do we make individuals' reputation better by showing up better on all these communities. Uh, then if you think of a, of a DevOps engineer or a product engineer that's involved in rolling out products and supporting them, we absolutely want them to get more sleep <laughs> or work on more new features rather than supporting stuff. So if we can shrink the time of taking you know, uh, several hours or days to diagnose a problem or finding the technical insight down to a couple of hours, then we've done our job. Um, in fact, we, we've actually published an IT forum benchmark back in December around the last time we spoke that characterized how long it takes people to get answers on things like community forums. And, we found only 20% of the time is an answer posted in the first 24 hours. And with the urgency at which we're all building and, and releasing technology, that's just not going to cut it, right? So lots of, lots of upside to attack there. 
earlier this year we sat down for a prediction video and you shared some great predictions and i would like to have you back on the show just to see how many of your predictions turned out to be true uh, i want to focus uh, to understand what kind of roadmap you have for this year for the company we're just on the verge of doing a general available release for a paratus assistant for stack overflow so we've had uh, you know well hundreds now of trolley users that have used the product since january and um, you know we're about to announce general availability assistant that just is free download that goes in your Chrome browser and helps you as you're looking at a Stack Overflow question on cloud native technologies, find the answer or give you recommendations on how to post a better reply to improve your reputation. Um, so we've got you know, tremendous feedback from the Stack Overflow community and cloud native users that we've signed up on the need for uh, something to help them and uh, the, the quick value prop that they've got as they've downloaded the product. So we try to take all the friction out of you know, creating that initial uh, help and aha moment for our users. Robin, thank you so much for joining us today. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Great to join you again. And I'd say that it's going to be a great year for enterprise AI. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>